So they say drama should be kept on stage, but there's been a few bumps in the road for this one, and we're talking about Sylvia here at the Old Vic Theatre. So stay tuned to find out how many legs we think on this piece. Whether it's break a leg or a leg it. So lovely to have you fellow leggers with us here at the Old Vic, which is celebrating its 200th, no, it's celebrated its 200th birthday this year. Yes. Uh, the iconic place of London theatre. A lot of special things happening at the Old Vic, and one of those things is Sylvia, a very short run of this. It's, it is a short run. Yeah, surprisingly so. Um, Who knows what they've got planned? I was thinking about this, but um, Groundhog Day was also a short run, but not as short as this. Nowhere near as short as this. This is a brand new musical, though, so at least it shares that in mm. common. This has book, lyrics, direction, and choreography by Katie Prince. Okay. Additional material is by Priya Palmer, Josh Cohen and DJ Ward. For those who don't know who Katie Prince is, I don't know. she's the head of the production company Zoo Nation, who blend dance, hip-hop, soul and funk to breathe new life into stories you think you already know. Now this sounds really quite cool yeah. and exciting. I think cool is a good word for it. Talking of story, Sylvia tells the story of and celebrates the life of historical icon Sylvia Pankhurst and her pivotal role in the suffragette movement with her passion for politics ultimately tearing her family apart. Fantastic. I love a bit of a historical lesson. Yeah, I'm almost feeling like already hip hop and history Hamilton parallels? As you say, it has a very Maybe. diverse cast. It does. Uh, so uh, that's brilliant already. This production has been peppered with problems though. Oh no. Yeah, the show is still in previews, but already there have been cancelled performances, press night has been moved, and unfortunately, the actress playing the lead role was taken ill, collapsing mid-show at the first performance and leading to Act 2 being cancelled that night. Okay, is she back? She's not back. Um, she, Genesis Linnea is her name. Um, she mm. was cast as Sylvia, but since being taken ill, the role has been played by Maria Amakinwa, who we are seeing today. So okay. she's on. Well, Genesis, we wish you the best of luck. Yeah, there is nothing well worse than being ill, let alone being in like such a demanding piece during uh, previews and yeah. on a short run. That must be a really horrible obligation. So hope you get well soon. Yeah, we're wishing her all the best and also wishing Maria all the best stepping into this. Because yeah. understudies don't get a rehearsal get period in previews and in, you know, they don't get any notices. Pressure. The pressure is on. So, also in the cast are Olivier Award winner John Daglish. He won his Olivier for Sunny Afternoon, but we yep. last saw him in Common, Common at the National. At the National. Check out our review for that. And also in the cast, Wolverhampton. Wolverhampton's finest, West End leading lady and soul pop queen, Beverly Knight. Beverly Knight in the role of Emmeline Pankhurst. Okay, so a great cast. I in know, this. I'm quite excited. Um, and yeah, knowing nice that, ingredients. Do you know what? I'm a bit of a sadist because knowing there's been a few problems just makes me more excited. Stay tuned. We know there's an interval now in previews. The show's running around two hours plus interval, but we will let you know more at the end. So stick around to find out how many legs and catch our 30 second interval breakdown coming soon. We've come to the interval, which means it is time for the Breaker Leggers 30 second interval breakdown. So, so what, what do you think do you, so far? What do I think? I think it's a really powerful message. It's, it's this kind of story that I know about, names being banded around that I know about, but the intricacies of the story um, I don't know. So this is really interesting um, and quite powerful. How about you? Um, I don't think there's a huge amount of originality here. I think parallels will be drawn with Hamilton. Um, there are certain moments I think are lovely. Um, it's okay. I'm interested to see what's going to happen next and where it's going to take us. We've come to the end, um, although not, not really, not really the end. Not actually, not the actual end. We don't. An end. We didn't see in a loose this, end in this performance. We didn't see the last scene. They stopped no. before the last scene. Then the um, director, Kate Prince. Yeah, Kate Prince. Came out and um, after the applause and the bow said that uh, we, we can't see the last scene because of certain elements that they, I guess, haven't had time to put together and would actually put the safety of the actors at risk. So for this preview, and I think the last couple of previews as well, they haven't been doing the final scene. So we didn't quite get the resolution. 
we're presuming we, women got the vote I don't know did, did they? I don't know I hope they did I oh, mean I'm otherwise sure. uh, otherwise I've, all these women have seen queuing outside polling stations have been right wasting their time haven't they so I presume something happens it must be quite dynamic if there's risk involved for us to see that so I guess we're going to be commenting on what we saw yeah of what we did see go first what did you make of it it was okay it's sort of it's a really important story Uh, I think it's something that in the in a centenary year of women getting the vote they got the vote in 1918 it's so on trend so topical right now so relevant Um, still relevant still and I think also there's parallels to be drawn about the fact that we have women now have the vote and we're at that sort of equality level there but you know what Black people still don't have equal representation in arts, in politics, and being a black cast, I think there's a message here that goes further than just women's rights. Yeah. It actually spreads into race rights. I um, would go a step further. I go. Okay. I think it goes beyond um, race rights as well. Obviously, rights within sex, um, but also in there you have um, sexuality. Yes. Is also commented on. Briefly and touched, touched on. on. Very briefly, I happen to say. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's but in it is there. mentioned, and least. it made me angry at one point. That you know, what is it with people? Why can't we just let people be people, be themselves, and be happy, regardless what? of their sex, regardless yeah. of their sexuality, you know, regardless of their race? And this this piece really does Drive capture that all of that. And so that's really the, important for me. I sort of live my life now as if it doesn't, if, if something that somebody does doesn't directly impact my life in any way, then I don't even need to have an opinion on it. Like I just don't need to because unless it's theatre, then you give your view. Of course. Well, of course, the arts are. <laughs> you know, what is an art without a critic? I don't know. But no, I just think to myself, no, it makes someone else happy in their lives and how they live their lives and who they are and what like that. It's just not relevant and and. And yes, yeah, seeing the fact that, okay, making a political vote, I suppose, does have an impact on an entire democracy, but we held these women down as men um, for, for a really pathetic reason and also made reasons up, and that makes me also almost ashamed to yeah. be a man. I mean, I have guilt by association here, and yeah. I think this piece really holds a candle to that and, and says look at yourselves we're all culpable mm. by almost by doing nothing the injustices going on in the world today against other minorities yeah. we are culpable by our inaction and our silence absolutely this all is it the takes sort of piece that drives us to action sign up to that charity donate to those funds who was it that says all it takes for evil to prosper is good men to do nothing? I want to say maybe it was Winston Churchill because he was in this show, but I might be totally wrong. Comment below and let us know. He's not depicted very now, well. Now, Winston in this show, Churchill was an asshole. Yeah. According to this and what I know about him, he held women's rights back by a decade or more. At um, least. Yeah, by his, just by his own agenda. All because of listening to his mama. And I am shocked about that we hold this man in high esteem for getting us through the wars and etc blah 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 but maybe we shouldn't maybe we should actually be more critical of the man do you know no one's perfect do you know what i mean he did great in some stuff we could say that about anyone in anything we're good in some stuff doesn't mean we're perfect across the whole board then what sort of humans would we be then we'd lose our two, we'd become two dimensional figurines. Well, here Winston of Churchill was portrayed by Delroy Atkinson. He was great. Fantastic. At the right amount of sort of, uh, they, they portray him as a bit of a big kid. You know, there's a comedy element to him. There's almost a Trump thing of sort of having to ask for his mum's permission and being a little bit like that. You know how like Trump in a diaper sort of thing? I can see that and it works really well. Yeah, he was great. Really good casting ideas in relation to that. I also loved Carly Borden. We saw Carly in Assassins, which was brilliant. We saw Carly Borden in Wonder.Land, which was not. Um, Also (laughs) great was John Daglish. Congratulations, he's just he's over just there. Yeah, he's over just over there. there. <laughs> in the role of Keir Hardy and Lord Curzon. Um, always impressed with John's work. So and there were also a, a couple of ensemble characters. The mum of um, Winston Churchill was great. Scene stealing, almost. Show stealing, almost. Yeah, show stealing. I'm trying desperately to. Oh, yeah, so Jade know. Hackett as Lady Jenny Churchill and yep. Edith Garud and the narrator for One Small Part. Yeah, um, they were fantastic. Hilarious together. Um, her and there and was Delroy. another one. There was, the ensemble was really strong as well. The, yeah. the choreography and the movement was really nice. Now, 
there are some parallels between this and Hamilton. I don't know, did they shout out to you? And yeah, I was a huge to put... amount. And it was hard to not to try and compare the two. I did, unfortunately, at times start looking at it with, okay, is this directly from Hamilton? Has this been inspired heavily by? But that, and I was trying to put my finger on, what is it? And have they just pulled it up? It's John, Mr. Dalgleish! Say, Mr. Dalgleish. say hello, Mr. Dalgleish! Lovely to Olivier see you. Olivier Award hello winner to, himself. Hello, hello, hello. How, how are you finding the journey? Because it's been oh, it's quite amazing. a journey. It's been yeah, quite yeah, a yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. You're having it's a bit a, of an experience, are you? Ups and downs, but we're pushing through. <laughs> Luckily for us, the company spirit is amazing. Yeah, I imagine those things. What you had a great response. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Exactly. And you are having a great response. It's been like that every time we've done this so far. Good. I think, you know, people have sort of been explained, they've seen in the press what's happened with the video. Yeah. 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 We want to know what's going to happen. What's this scene that everyone's missing? What, what happens in the end? Can you not like yeah. tease us with it? Does it, it does resolve? It does resolve. It does okay. resolve. So they do get the vote. The, we weren't the sure. The reason why we're finishing ways is because it's a really sort of natural ending yes. for where yes. we are yeah. at the moment. Yeah. But then hopefully, you know, next week we can actually get to the end for taking this stuff. Because when your leading lady goes down the very, very first preview. Yeah. In previews, usually that's when you're, you know, Still refining it and fine tuning it. Yeah. yeah. We'll we'll you're back in. Doing a great job. Lovely well, to see you. Thanks, Lovely to see you. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, yeah, thanks for stopping yeah. by. Thanks. Yeah. thanks. Oh, isn't he a lovely guy? What a nice He's chap. He's always been a nice chap. Um, what were we saying? We're talking about the cast. Yeah. Um, I've I completely lost my thread. Well, I think we should move on to some sort of, of the big names now. Beverly oh, I Knight. know we were talking about home oh, before sorry. we go on. Um, we're talking about um, the comparison between this and Hamilton. Yes, you were saying. Now I was thinking the, the, what, what it does with this is it's a modern musical. Hamilton is a modern musical. It's bringing the music of now and the choreography of now and today. And this is what this does. And I think that's where the comparison is. Because I was thinking at one point, is this just ripping off Hamilton? I don't think it is a rip off. Do you think it's, it's had it's an inspiration parallel. by? It's a parallel in that it's modern and it's now and it's echoes of now and that's it. So I'm then content that this is its own unique being. Sorry, I just wanted to get that out. Well, let's talk about Beverly Knight me. for a while. Let's talk about the vocals of she Beverly Knight. She can sing the phone book, she, that woman. She has some... Ah, she's got some moments. great riffs. She's got some pipes. And I mean, I'm proud of her because she's from, she's from Wolverhampton. But um, outside of that, she's just a fantastic stage actress. Do you know what? If she hadn't have made a name in pop, she could have easily have made a name on stage. She could have done. She's um, she is great. She's a great actress. I mean, that's why she's on the stage as well because she's very capable. She's um, great. She and is. And what a role! What a piece to be involved in. A great message. Absolutely. And oh, we, we did a drum roll. Is this one of our understudies? Yes. In playing the role of Sylvia. Played um, by in this Maria performance. Maria Amakinwa. Yeah. And, I mean, other than the fact she had to grab the book a couple of times, she grabbed her script a couple of times. Do you know what? What an amazing achievement from an amazing young actress. And the appreciation was huge from her fellow cast members, the director and the audience, um, recognising that feat of what to do in a matter of days. It's a busy show. Is. There is a lot going on, so it's a lot to learn. Yeah totally proud of her and I think that do you know what I hope Genesis gets well soon but if she for any reason doesn't it's in safe hands she is going to give a hundred percent to this at every single show and she's not giving a disappointing yeah. performance um, set wise it's yeah. a pretty basic set it is um, it's much all, like Hamilton in that way really yeah it's all in the imagination um, lighting lighting seemed a bit um, primitive in places but there was lighting they uh, oh good the so director we could see did say at the start that usually this time is where they work on the lighting but they've been having to focus on other stuff yeah. and I did get a, a kind of a feel that okay maybe lighting has taken a bit of a second place but it's going to be good I think but it has the potential who knows the, it's like the it's still preview. has great potential there yeah. sound balance was pretty Shoddy. Oh, yeah, sound balance. Now we were up in the, is it the Bayless? Uh, the Lillian Bayless Circle. Lillian Bayless Circle at the top. We had an issue when we saw Hamilton being up at the top and the sound balance. I had similar issues here. I lost probably 35% of the text, which in a show which is at times very quick and very clever linguistically and with the text, I lost some of what they were saying, which was a real shame. It was a real shame, but what they were saying was interesting and you could tell the songs drive the narrative they're yep. there for the right purposes it's sung through pretty much but they are 
pushing the story. It's They're not superfluous. It's a real funky, groovy soundtrack at Solely, times. Solely sort of not a oh, 70s yeah. bit of funk, then a bit of rap, bit of this, see? Driving, natural born rapper. Driving percussion. Natural born crapper. That's what I am. <laughs> Real driving percussion. So um, musically, uh, I really liked it. I, I just wish the balance was, of the vocals was higher, sitting above. Now, when it was stripped away, there's a really nice acoustic numbers right in the opening, before the interval, and at the end where they finished it. Now, where the music was completely stripped back, and we could hear the vocals beautifully crisp, and the harmonies were great, tight harmony. Love it tight. The vocals of the whole cast and the ensemble. Obviously, we can't mention everyone, but the ensemble was great as well. Let's round it up then. So Let's for Sylvia, or what was she? say seven eighths of Sylvia that we've actually seen we are going to give four. Oh, four legs a really important piece of really important time in history yeah. and told in a really interesting way mixing in race with that equality as well I would say it's sort of a three for me but I can see how it is gonna be a four when it's finished and when it's tightened up with those lighting cues and the sound issues are sorted so I've sort of got to pay dividends to that a little bit um, but yeah right now I don't think you get the full picture by the time it opens you absolutely will and come and see it and if you do let us know what you think yeah and if you do come and see it make sure you're quick because it's not open for long no. who knows what's gonna happen to this maybe you'll get another life maybe not who knows you've not got long yes we're the breaker leggers and we'll catch you again soon bye, bye.